Hello and welcome to my made up tutorial. This is basically to demonstrate how to actually create uh, valid, custom and bespoke attributes. Attributes in C Sharp are basically these cool little things here. Uh, as this uh, application is using C Sharp MVC version 2, I'll demonstrate how to actually create custom attributes for models. As you can see, this is my class which inherits from the controller within the MC MVC framework and what we're going to do here is create a, a custom attribute for this class here and this is within my models dot as you can see here there it is so I'm going to go ahead and show you the, the existing ones I've already pre-wrote here as you can see from the required here this means that the username is actually required and it's got a string length, the maximum of 25, and the password is also required. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a, a very similar one to the, the above two, but for also to check if the username actually does exist, because I can show you the scenario at the moment. Those error messages are outputted there, but when I do enter some data in the login, there's nothing saying there is no matching results or username, password incorrect or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. I'm going to create a folder called validation within the models, which basically all my other attributes are there. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So new class. And I'm going to what should I call it? Um, um, let's go ahead and call it username exist in database attribute. Now, the changes with these namespaces here are going to have to go because we need two more apart from the using the system. We need a using system dot component model dot data annotations. And we also need the using system dot web MVC. Now this class is a bit useless at the moment because it's not inheriting anything. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, inherit the uh, validation attribute. Like you can see the validation attribute. Um, to basically do this is uh, pretty straightforward because all we're going to do now is override a method within here. So if we can actually go to the definition of here. And as you can see, the error message is all pretty default there. And the method we're going to override here is that is valid. And as you can see, it's a virtual. So if you're going to inherit from this, you have to override it. Okay. So to do an override method, we just say. Oh, as it's a boolean, and I, mu I must also stress out that the return type has to be the same as the uh, override default one. So the name is is valid, and it's having an object passing into it, and we'll call it value the same as the other one. And now I'm going to return. True for default. So first of all, we're going to check if this value has anything within it, as it's an object, and an object can be null because an object is a nullable type. So if value is equal to null, then return true because we basically pass this checker and then go on to the required and. Uh, the actual length checkers as well. So now we basically need to check if this actually exists with our database. As I've, I've wrote this uh, in a different structure and a manner, I've actually got all my database connections within a class library called svni.libraries and then within the connection I've got queries, 
user queries and so on. So to actually access the uh, database here, we're going to have to import the class libraries. And to do so, using svr.libraries.connection.queries. Now I can access those classes now. So I can say user queries dot and all, because all these are static methods there is no instance needed to create them so we're going to go ahead and double click into here and this this seems like the one we need is using in taking this accepts the, the username so we're going to go ahead back into here and we're going to assign this to a to a row or we could even say just return because it's the same type so is username taken and then we're going to say value dot to string because we already know it's not null so there's something definitely within the value and this attribute is definitely going to uh, return some kind of string as well so there we go and that basically is it so we're going to go ahead and go into our uh, the controller again and then go into the definition of uh, the user model and we're basically building it and I'm, I must also point out that you may be thinking that the attribute looks a bit ugly on the end of the class but because it already goes in within the system you won't actually need to type the attribute name so I'm going to go ahead and go to the user login and now you'll see what I mean so we're going to say user exist in data and as you can see it's not it's not found at the moment and the reason for that is because we need to import and it's in the website and it should be models dot validation. And as you can see now it's it's found it. And as we've already inherited an error message, we can just say sorry no records of this user has been found. So we're going ahead and build this and basically just hope and pray it actually works because I've not not tested this or anything before before on this uh, tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and uh, jump in right at the deep end. I'm going to say foobar. Yep, there we go. Then we're going to say show because that actually exists. And there we go, perfect working. I hope you enjoyed.